Sebastian, what is the story, buddy? Hope you keep yourself well. Hope all is good. And um, thank you very much for your patience and waiting for this check-in to come through. So just gonna be a relatively quick one here today, dude, as your week has gone pretty well. Like when you're at this point of the off season, like it's it's just rinse and repeat now. You know, it's doing the same thing and repeating that as much as you can. But like if you need to kind of engage in a little bit more hyper palatable foods, like just don't feel as though you can't do that right now. Like but generally average intake is exactly where we want it to be. The look that you're presenting now at 116 kilos is fucking impressive bro um like it really really is going to be holding pretty reasonable condition at a pretty high body weight like the only thing that we're going to be really running into now is probably just kind of the physiological kickback of the body weight itself you know the amount of demand being placed in your body just being yourself day to day is significantly higher but if that's the only real issue that we're running into at this point man we're in a pretty good spot we do have that volume escalation coming in now relatively soon which i want to kind of push and i want to engage in relatively soon now that we kind of have the propensity to do it now the food is high right now let's just keep food as it is there's no real need for us to do any different we're kind of 5300 or so in that respect you know with a kind of free meal once or twice a week which is perfect then we're looking at your meals on the non-training day as well it's kind of in the upper echelon so kind of you know 4855 which is super super sick where will i look well, look at the camera this time. You can look at the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I can. Yeah, yeah, can. <laughs> I've heard the right. I'll give you permission to look at my <laughs> end, bro. You can't touch it, but you can look at it. Yeah. Well, this is an honor. <laughs> That's what I say to my missus. Yeah. <laughs> you can't touch it, but you can look at it. Yeah. So you're waiting for the menu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Let's do this. <laughs> Serious face. All right, ladies and gents, what is the story? Welcome back to Walk the Walk. So episode two. And um, before I crack on, I just want to say a massive thank you to all the positive feedback coming from the first video. Um, it was pretty unexpected, but pretty overwhelming at the same time. Like really, really, really positive feedback. Everyone seemed to enjoy the kind of, um, kind of almost documentative and educational main of the video, um, which was pretty cool. But we're back for episode two. So just before we kind of crack on, just a little update on myself. So this was due to happen a couple of weeks ago, but I ended up getting COVID. Um, now luckily for me, I had zero symptoms. I lost my taste for a couple of days, which was a pain in the ass because appetite was already zero. But uh, in general, we've kind of kicked back into gear again, feeling 100% after the past couple of days. Just kind of took a handy, like very, very reserved in sessions after I got back to Manchester, because I was back in Dublin where I'm from. But uh, ready to rock and roll now, kind of eight weeks or so away from kind of parking this off season. Originally, we were to kind of go about a 12 week kind of cruising period, but just based on the time that we've lost and kind of understanding what I want and what I can do and you know kind of also understanding the risks that I run at any point in time as well I've pulled that down to eight weeks and we're going to add an extra kind of six to eight weeks onto the period of time where I basically lost that due to COVID and um, so turning the volume up for the next kind of eight weeks or so really just kind of head to the ground working doing what I need to do to get the shit done and then we will cruise for eight weeks and then first of May prep will start for shows in both September and onwards pretty much so ready to rock and roll now got pull up today and um, so Jay is joining me for pull which is going to be fantastic buzzing for that uh, so going to talk you through a session like I did last time fingers crossed we can kind of add some educational bits as we go without kind of over science and the shite areas and we can have another successful video like last time <laughs> look, at there. look at me doing my pre-workout for the first time <laughs> I've, done this, I've done this three times already looks sick all right, there we go. Mic's on. This is not the first time I've done this. There we go. Uh, there we go. Put that in. Boom. You can uh, use my supplements for this like Yeah, I will. Uh, use code J10. Uh, Magic. <laughs> Magic 10 for all your J scouts. All right, boom. All right, boom. Color of this, man. Snake blood. It's like success. Yeah. Look at you, huh? Can't be later, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, there we go. Let's grab. New pulls and legs tomorrow. Next video, next video will be legs though. Oh, yeah, next video. So they all the same. <laughs> so we got pull today. So generally with my pull sessions, up until about five or six weeks ago, my pull frequency was like every 10 to 14 days. Like historically, my back tends to respond like really, really well comparatively to everything else. So we kind of had frequency way, way down to lead a little bit more runway into having a little bit more hamstring volume, a little bit more delt volume. 
But now that we're pretty close to kind of parking this all season off, we're just kind of ramping everything up north. So back to pretty much a weekly pull session. We also have a posterior session where I have a lot of work on the kind of upper back and one or two pull downs on that day as well. But this is our kind of only sole focused pull day across the week. So kind of back at it again. Volume is relatively minimal, so there's no escalations across pull because, as I said, historically I don't really need it. So very much for the maintenance baseline, not really driving fatigue too high in the kind of grand scheme of the programming, but still a lot of work to be done, a lot of effort to be had, and uh, it's going to be a good session. Fresh outfit, you go, going to keep people guessing. Now, um, game plan is each video, have a new Jordan tracksuit, keep myself accountable. So the last video, there was no Jordan tracksuits. So inevitably in this one, we're going to have to. One of the really cool things about this exercise in and of itself and just, again, trying to science people out too much is when we look at strength profiles, which is generally how a tissue has the capacity to exhibit force and then a resistance profile, which is generally how a machine has the capacity to elicit that force. A single arm pull down, for the most part, is one of the only pull and movements that you can do that balances those two things together. So when you're looking at trying to start something just trying to try a pull session in a way that's going to be conducive to, you know, pre-fatiguing or kind of like, you know, optimally fatiguing a tissue as you start. This is going to be a really, really good option because again, the contraction capacity, the force capacity, those two things are kind of married together really, really well. So if you're looking to kind of set up your own programming, you're looking to start orientating things yourself, you're looking for somewhere to start, this is probably where I'd go. Really, right, I'm shaking. <laughs> Don't believe I, saw you, so. I think it's because I'm around with you, mate. I don't usually deal with celebrities that much. I don't blame you, Another cool point here to kind of talk about, especially in any kind of pull session. So, I've opted for a bent over row here, but I've taken the kind of executive decision, sorry, Cal, to pull from the floor. So, what I mean by that is kind of pulling from a basic dev stop, otherwise known as like a pendley row. But, like, what we need to consider when we talk about programming is 
you know, your, your program is a collective of sessions. It's not just a single session on its own. If it was a singular session, it wouldn't necessarily be called programming. So two sessions prior to this and then three sessions time, I'm going to be loading the spine pretty heavily, pulling from the floor, using stiff legs. I've also got some other bent over variations and some other kind of cable variations where I'm loading the spine quite heavily, quite extensively. If I'm trying to stay on top of recovery, if I want to maintain five sessions a week, I have to be thinking about every available option that I have to manage recovery and manage fatigue. Pulling from a dead stop, pulling from a floor, pulling from the floor, pardon me, it allows me to do that without taking away from the quality of the session or the outcome that I'm after. So again, all programming works, but better programming works better. Humbles the fuck out of you. <sighs> <laughs> 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 When you, um, despite the fact that I'm, pre I'm feeling pretty close to 100% post-COVID, at the end of the day, you know, up until a week ago, I was about 14 pounds down. Um, so over the course of like a week or so, I pulled off like close to seven kilos, just from not eating, just from not being able to taste and shit like that. So we have to understand that there's a reserved approach that's probably, although not exactly enjoyable, but probably necessary around now. So I'm feeling pretty close to 100%, but it's a fine balance, you know, like as soon as I push it too hard because there's a camera in front of me, I'm gonna cross that apex and I'm gonna be fucked, you know, so I have to kind of take things reservedly and take things as they come, take things with a pinch of salt, slowly build up from a baseline. If you ever find yourself coming back from COVID, especially if you're an athlete, physique athlete especially, everyone's always asking how to approach things. I have a kind of way of doing things. Go back to your logbook, peel back maybe, you know, four or five weeks worth of programming, see where you were there, start at that point build from there. If you need to go back a little bit, just go further and kind of follow that as a progression pattern. And that's going to be another way for you to kind of systemically go back to where you were without feeling too much like you were behind. Around you, prick. Where are you, bastard? Here we go. Okay, let's go, Rossi. All right, mate. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Oh, all right.
So he is probably a couple of people are probably watching this, thinking as to why I'm putting D handles on a mag grip. So no disrespect to mag grip or whatever. Like, although there is a certain advantage to the grip itself, the actual handles themselves, much like any kind of fixed handle, they're not very permissive of the wrists. You know, and there is going to be a natural warranty, a natural want of not only the wrist but the glenohumeral joint to want to move through these kind of extension and flexion exercises. So having any kind of setup that's going to be a little bit more permissive is always going to be advantageous. You're arguably going to get a lot more out of it. It's going to be a little bit safer. Off the back of that then, your output can be significantly higher. And then of course the return on investment then is significantly higher. So there's some things to be thinking about. Yours. to move. <laughs> oh. Oh. Fuck off. That'll do. That'll do. Oh. Yeah, cut that. <laughs> Not to stamp on the dreams or the thoughts of anyone else, but the reality is there's no real such thing as an upper back row. Now, going to get kind of anatomical with this one. Kind of anything that's governed or that you would associate with the upper back, that's largely governed through retraction. So just kind of this movement here. The kind of movement of the upper arm isn't really indicative of upper back training, so to speak. Now, admittedly, the tissues that you would kind of, you know, call that upper back region, yeah, rear delts, traps, rhomboids, kind of mid back in general, they're all kind of coming into play with here. But the reality of the situation is there's no such thing as an upper back row. It's more so that the upper back is playing a part within each component of that row. Now, that's obviously super pedantic. It's super specific. It doesn't really change anything so far as the application, but it's just a cool thing to understand so far as the application of anatomy practically to us me heads. It's not all just airy fairy nonsense that we don't need to understand. It's things that we should consider and understand to some degree and apply to our training if we can. God damn. Pretty interesting exercise here. So we're doing a single arm dumbbell hammer curl. Now you'll see when you actually see the clip of the exercise itself, I kind of lean into the work inside and there's no real kind of magic means about it. It's just if you're somebody who is slightly broader like myself, or maybe you're just your morphology has you with a slightly wider set shoulder. The reality is that if you're doing this with kind of either two dumbbells or even if you're standing upright with a single dumbbell, your alignment is just going to be off. You know, like you're going to end up having to kind of curl in this way or you're going to end up having to adjust and essentially you're going to kind of offload because we have to remember that this dumbbell, the only thing that's working against that is gravity. So ideally, you're going to try and set your alignment 
relative to gravity, which is always going to work straight down. So if you are somebody who kind of sits a little bit broader or somebody who just has that slightly wider set shoulder and you're doing exercises such as this and it never really felt right, I'm going to advise you to go unilateral, lean into that working side and you should find it significantly better. Right, so that is pull wrapped up. Um, another session in the books. You know, not really any more than kind of eight, nine sessions left to repeat and then we're done. Um, all season wrapped up. But thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, the feedback from the first video has been more than I could ever expect. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. So please go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Let me know how you get on. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below if there is anything you want to ask in reflection of the session that we've done or just anything in general, please don't hesitate to do so. I'll be answering as much as I can. Anyone wants to get in touch with me, just reach out on Instagram. I'll have a chat with you there as well. But in the meantime, peace, love, happiness. Slán Chatty soon.